In 1917, my grandfather, Albert Schmidt, was fighting in World War I. He was fighting as a French soldier, later passing through Ellis Island as a cook, and then came to the Union Club, where he was the executive chef of the Union Club in New York City. My own father was Pierre Adrian. Pierre fought, well, he didn't fight, he was captured. He was captured by the German soldiers in World War II. At 16 years old, he was forced to fight. He escaped the German army. He fled to his beloved Vosges Mountains, where he fought as a French resistance fighter until the end of the war. He too came through Ellis Island, settled in New York, and later to Cincinnati. And in Cincinnati, he brought to us our first five stars. He was the executive chef of the iconic Maisonette restaurant. <laughs> so now you see, I have the gene, the genetic disorder to become a chef. <laughs> and with this gene comes a lot of responsibility. 35 years later, cooking for many of you, I decided I needed a change. I needed to become a fighter. I needed to enter a war like my father and like my grandfather. The war that I entered was the war on food waste and hunger. Food waste and hunger. This was a war worth fighting for. 40% of the food grown in America today goes to a landfill. 40% of overproduced, oversourced, or probably just imperfect, like me, food goes to the landfill, emitting methane gas and obviously contributing to the climate change that is haunting our planet today. Yet 40% of Americans are hungry. 40% of Americans do not know where their next meal is coming from. 40% of the kids today are not being fed. So that is my war. That is the war that I have chosen to fight. And I looked at the situation and I thought, I'm a professional chef. I'm the answer. I believe that chefs are the answer to this solution. And by forming some type of system where we could take 40 to 40. Now, I'm not a mathematician. I have friends up here who were in my high school class, and they do darn well. That was not the case. But I knew what I was looking at was 40%. So we created a system that we call La Soup. Many of you enjoyed a bowl today. <laughs> Where are they? So what we decided was a three-pronged mission. Could we rescue, transform, and share this soup with the hungry people of our city? I'm happy to say that this year, year five, we have rescued over one million pounds of food. <laughs> Rescuing it is part one. We are able to transform 650,000 servings brought by... One, uh, I'm going to get this statistic correct. 1,500 registered volunteers that brought it to 83 partnering agencies, including those adorable little dancers, uh, <laughs> the cute kids. All of those statistics are added with what we love and adore, our Bucket Brigade. Our Bucket Brigade is local chefs, many of which you will probably be going there tonight for dinner, take a random box of our produce and every week create their own soup for our volunteers to distribute. That in and of itself 
was 9,000 gallons of soup. So then you ask, why soup? First of all, it's the perfect vehicle for a chef to show off their creative talent with the very, very random products that we receive on a day-to-day -day <laughs> basis. You never know. Secondly, I believe that soup represents, in a very metaf metaphorical sense, it's love, it's comfort. When you're sick, you want a healing bowl of soup. We know that many of the people that we are feeding have never had a real, real meal, a real meal prepared by somebody that cares and loves. That is the soup. So our, our little Jose Andres, has anyone heard of Jose Andres? <laughs> he's, my, he's my Dalai Lama up here. Jose took the disaster in Puerto Rico, which was a, a category whatever hurricane, leveled the island and was able to prepare three and a half million meals, fresh, hot, nutritious meals, not MREs and not canned goods, because he called upon the professionals, and that is what Le Soup is doing. Call upon the professional chefs, form a system, and get this food to them so that they can give it to those in need. And that is what Le Soup represents. So, four years ago, there was a social media post which became the battle cry for Le Soup. It was a teacher at Euler, which is a lower Price Hill school, and she wrote about 89% of her students were on free and reduced lunch. And it was a Monday morning, and she came into the, class, or came into the school and found a child too weak from hunger to climb the steps and get to the classroom. This child had not eaten since Thursday's lunch. It was Monday morning. Friday had been a snow day. This child was expected to sit in a desk and take the Ohio State standardized test when all she needed was to be fed. The child, the teacher, the school, the district, and the state were going to be judged because this child was hungry. Out of 136 children, 11 had coats. All were cold and all were hungry. So like my father and my grandfather before me, I have entered this war. I've entered this war to win it. And I have the team, and I have the talented volunteers, which is our army, our backbone, and I have found my, sh my purpose as a chef, and I welcome all of you to join us. Join us in this fight. This is a fight we can win. Thank you.